You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. The title of my message this morning is God's Ultimate Intention. Have you ever wondered why God created us? Why did he create you? What purpose? He created us for fellowship. He made us in his very likeness to have fellowship with us. He didn't create us because he felt lonely or he needed you. He created you because he wanted sons and daughters like his own son, Jesus Christ. And that he could shower the same love that he showers on Jesus, his son, on you and I. The Bible says God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. You know, This is an amazing thing. We'll find this all about when we get to heaven. When man sinned, when Adam and Eve sinned, it didn't shock God. There's one word you'll never hear from God. Oops. (laughs) Second plan. There's no second plan with God. God knew exactly what he would do. He would send his son in the world to become a sacrifice for our sins. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 4 and 5, For he chose us in him. He chose us in him before creation of the world. Now take notice of that. Try and grasp hold of that. Before he created the heavens and the earth, he chose you. He had you in mind. And you and I, By his grace, we responded to him. It says to be adopted as his sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. You see, when you read about creation, God creating the heavens and the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, the birds of the air, the fish in the sea, the animals. He finished his creation by making this comment. It's good. But when he created Adam and Eve, when he created the human race, he didn't say it's good. It's, he said it was very good. Very good. You know, it's hard to grasp hold of the fact that we're made in his image. In Genesis 1, he said, let us. Speaking to Holy Spirit, speaking to Jesus, the Son, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. You think about it. There was a plan put in place by God. It was a fourfold progression of God's intention for us. The start of that plan was in the Garden of Eden. The Bible says he walked in the cool of the day in fellowship with Adam and Eve. Can you imagine that? In fact, the Bible says Adam heard the sound or the voice of God. The Hebrew word ruach. The wind. Had Adam heard that sound? See, God walking has a certain sound. What does that mean for us? It means that we need to learn to listen to the voice, the sound of Holy Spirit. You and I have that ability to listen to Him. So from the garden, he met with mankind on the mountaintop. 
he met with Moses. And he said to Moses, tell my people that I bore them on eagles' wings when I brought them out of Egypt through the Red Sea. And tell them they're a special treasure to me and that they, I want them to become a kingdom of priests unto me. The only condition, they must obey me. And so we see God's ultimate intention beginning to take place. What was he wanting from his highest creation? Fellowship. Relationship. Thirdly, we see that God met with man in the tabernacle in a tent. The tent was called a meeting place. That's where God says, I will meet with you. In Exodus 25, verse 22, And there I will meet with you, and I will speak to you from above the mercy seat, from between the, we, the, the cherubims, which are on the ark of the testimony, about everything which I give to you in commandment to the children of Israel. I'm going to, give you, I'm going to speak to you, Moses. Between the wings of the cherubim, I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to fellowship with you. I'm going to tell you what you need to know. And fourthly, God's ultimate intention was to infuse mankind with himself. He wanted to dwell in you. That was his ultimate divine intention. You are now the temple of the living God. And His Spirit dwells in you. In Ephesians 2, verses 21 to 22. Well, let's go, to, uh, first of all, to 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. Do you not know? Do you not know? Many people don't know. Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And His Spirit dwells in us. You can say, wow, if you like. It's an amazing fact that His Spirit, Holy Spirit dwells in this body. In Ephesians 2, 21 to 22, and I love it from the Passion Translation, it says this, this entire building that's collectively as well as individually, is under construction and is continually growing under His supervision until it rises up completed as the holy temple of the Lord Himself. This means that God is transforming us into the holy of holies, His dwelling place, through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. Pastor Phil, this is basic teaching. Give us something heavy. But do we grasp it? Do we grasp it? Do we take hold of it? Are we conscious of it? That 2022 will be the year that you and I, as God's people, truly grasp this truth that the fact that living inside of this earthen vessel is a treasure. The person of Holy Spirit, He dwells in you. And so with this in mind, I want to turn your attention to Matthew 21, verses 12 to 16. It says, Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. 
And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, they said, praise the Lord. Does it say that? Do you hear what these are saying? They were indignant. Absolutely upset. Do you hear what they're saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise? Four things that are needed in this temple. Your body, the dwelling place of God, to become alive and active in 2022. Four things. First, it must be purified. Jesus cleansed the temple. And that's what he does with us. When we offered our lives to him, when we surrendered our lives to him, he cleansed us from every sin, every spot, every stain by his precious blood. He drove out those who bought and sold in the temple because they were misusing the finances, overcharging the finances to the poor people that were coming to, to, uh, to offer sacrifices to God. And when you and I surrender our lives to Him, He first purifies it. In 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what happens when we gave our hearts to the Lord. Every sin you and I have ever committed, He cleansed it, He purified it. And if you've never experienced this, those that are watching online or here this morning, if you've never experienced it, I pray today you will experience the cleansing of Jesus Christ in your life. The second thing that the temple must have, Jesus said, it shall become a house of prayer. My house not just the physical temple, because this is his temple now. My house shall become a house of prayer. You know, some years ago, a question was asked. And I pose this question to you this morning. What area would you like to grow in this morning? What area this year, 2022, what area would you like to grow? Just think about it for a moment. What's the area you'd like to grow? And that was the question that was, that was posed. Some said, I'd like to grow in faith. Some said, I'd like to grow in the gifts of the Spirit. Another said, I'd like to grow in my preaching ability. Another said, I'd like to grow in kindness, in love, in the fruit of the Spirit, in patience. Anyone like to grow in patience this year? And so the question was directed back to the one who asked, originally asked the question, what area would you like to grow in? And he said, I'd like to grow in prayer. And that really caught hold of my attention. So what is prayer? Prayer is talking and listening to God. Not just talking. You ever talk to people just just talk and never listen? It's talking and listening. I like what John Wesley said. He said, prayer proves your dependency on God. It's the John 15 principle. Apart from you, I'm nothing. You are the vine, I am the branch. I've been engrafted in the vine and the goodness that I may portray in my life came from you, not of myself. And so my dependence is on you. Another comment he made was, God does nothing but an answer to prayer. He does nothing unless you and I pray. You have not because you ask not. This is the confidence that we have in Him. That's what God wants to build in us this year, a confidence. This is the confidence that we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, that's a key. He hears us. He hears us and we have the petitions that we ask of Him. You know, um, many years ago, I uh, 
we recently came out of a traditional church in the Pentecost and then going to a prayer meeting was a surprise and a half, particularly a Pentecostal prayer meeting. But I remember sitting behind this lady. Her name was Beryl Peterson. And she knew how to pray and touch the heart of God. You felt it as she was praying. And um, I said, how can, I thought to myself, how can I pray with such passion and such assurance that this woman has? What do I do? How do I do it? She's using the Word of God in Scripture to bring out her prayer request to back up what she requested. But you know, I never forgot that. And it started me on the journey in my prayer life and I'm still on that journey. You know, some people find it hard to pray. Maybe some here you find it hard. Maybe someone online, you find it hard to pray. But simply put, prayer is talking to God, sharing your thoughts, have you got a good friend that you talk to? You open up, you share, you share. You don't share all the good things that, uh, that happen to you. You share sometimes the struggles. Sometimes the challenges that you have in life, you share with your friend. That's exactly what you need to do in your prayer life. Just talk to God. Tell Him how you feel. But tell Him that God, with your help, I know you can bring me through this. You see, Jesus was a man of prayer. He said, I only do the things I see the Father doing. How could he say, make a comment like that? Because he spent time with the Father in prayer, sometimes all night, sometimes early in the morning, throughout the day. He'd just be walking with his sobs and be praying. And according to Romans 8, verse 34, Jesus hasn't stopped praying. He's even praying today. This is what it says. He said, um, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and for them, furthermore is also written, uh, risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So he's praying for you right now. He knows what you're going through. He knows the challenges you're facing right now. He knows the struggles you have. He knows how the enemy tries to attack you with fear and uncertainty and confusion. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, the Bible says. And so this reveals his incredible relationship that he wants to have with you and I. Amazing. And Jesus calls us to pray. He said, when you pray, he didn't say if you pray. He said, when you pray, when you pray. He wants us to pray for other people like he prayed for us. He wants us to have the heart for others like he had for us, like he has for us. So he wants us to pray. And so we see here, thirdly, about this house, his temple, his dwelling place. When this house becomes a house of prayer, listen to this, it be, then becomes a house of power. Healing took place. They brought the lame, the blind, came to him in the temple and he healed them. Your body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, where the Spirit of God dwells, is now a house of power. It's a house of power, church. You are a house of power. God's power now operates out of His temple, your body. And so prayer is to be followed by action. In Acts 1.8, you shall. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. In Ephesians 3.20, 
Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power, dunamis, that works in us. The power works in us. In Luke 9.1, he called his disciples together and gave them power and authority over all the devils and, and to cure diseases. He gave us power. In Mark 16, 17, and these signs will come to them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. 2022. They will speak in new tongues. See, this is present day stuff, church. This is normal Christian living. This is how God wants us to live. In Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you authority to trample, the word trample in Greek means to trample with contempt over all the power of the enemy, over serpents and scorpions and over all the power, and nothing, nothing, church, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Last year, 2021, when we were in Adelaide, three ladies wanted to, me to share a word with them. I knew them from the past. Pastor Derek from Horsham, who's now in heaven, was their pastor. They were intercessors and they asked me to share with them. And the course of conversation and course of sharing the word with them, they asked me to pray. And three of them were delivered of things that had happened in their past. One who uh, about age 70, God reminded her, brought to her attention something that happened when she was two years of age. Another lady, the same thing. Something happened in her childhood. Another lady, the same thing. Totally set free, delivered. A guy came up to me in church and he said, uh, can I catch up with you? And I said, yeah. And he began to open up to me about the struggles that we're having something that he had struggled for 20 years. He couldn't break it for 20 years. He could not break this for 20 years. And it put a lid on him. It limited him. It controlled him. And when I shared with him, Holy Spirit showed me what to do and he was totally delivered, set free. Then he said to me, he said, you know, God said to me for you to ask me, to ask you to pray for me for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I said, I'd love to. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, today, today can be your day. Two families invited us for a barbecue. And after, the, after we had eaten, had eaten we, uh, they asked us to pray for thee the children, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One had two sons, the other had a son and a daughter. Each one of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. As the Spirit, not filled, as the Spirit gave them utterance. In Micah 3.8, it says, But truly, truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Make that a confession this year. But truly, Truly, I am full of power by the Spirit. That's not arrogance. That's confessing the Word, what He says about you. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Three weeks ago, just uh, taking my bin, my rubbish bin back into the backyard, and I saw this lady on the footpath. I said, hi, how are you? And she came up to me. She said, oh, listen, my husband is very sick. Really sick. Cancer. I said, do you mind if I pray for him? She said, yes, please. So I went uh, with her. He was in his car. So I began to share with him. I said, I heard you were sick. I said, um, do you mind if I pray for you? I said, yeah. Okay. And I began to share the gospel with him, which you would do normally before you prayed for him. I shared with him about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, because we, uh, at this Christmas time, it'd be a good time to remember why Jesus came. 
And so I was able to share very briefly, very simply, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I said, I'm going to say a prayer of invitation of inviting Jesus Christ to cleanse us from all sins and so on. If you'd like to say this prayer after me, you can say it inside in your heart or you can say it out. So I said that prayer. And then when I finished, I said to him, I said, "Uh, did you say that prayer? He said, yes, I did. Surprisingly, I did. (laughs) And uh, I said to the wife, I said, did you say that prayer? And she said, I did. So I've been in touch with them. I've given them a Bible. I've shared with them. But because one day, by God's grace, we will meet together in heaven. But here's the qualifying factor. It all came out of prayer. Prayer, then power. Prayer, then power. The last thing that God wants His house to be is a house of perfected praise. From purity to prayer to power to perfected praise. So what is perfected praise? Perfected praise, I did ask the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, please, what would you say is perfected praise? And these thoughts came to my mind, and I believe it was from the Holy Spirit. He said, when your total focus of attention is on the one that you're worshipping and praising, that you're not allowing yourself to be distracted by the things around you, in front of you, behind you, in, in the side of you, you're totally focused on the one that you praise. You refuse to entertain the thoughts. You refuse to listen to the arguments. You, re- you refuse to listen to what the devil is trying to tell you. That is perfected praise. And we find that Jesus actually quotes this from Psalm 8 verse 2. And listen how he says it in Psalm, David says in Psalm 8 verse 2, Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you, you have ordained strength. Jesus changed it to perfected praise. Ordained strength because of your enemies that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. Ordained strength of praise silences the enemy. And Jesus called it perfected praise. Our praise may not always be clear or even sound eloquent. But by the time it reaches the ears of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's been perfected. It is this praise that shuts the mouth of the enemy. When your house is a house of praise, your enemies never feel safe anymore. They wonder, what's going on? This guy's crazy. What is happening? You know, Dick Mills comments, he's a great preacher, he's with the Lord now. He said, when he had a difficult decision or his challenge, he would put two, two chairs in the room and say to the devil, sit down and watch me pray and worship the Lord Jesus. Sit down and watch me pray and worship the Lord Jesus. Four things I encourage you to bring into 2022. I call it the four Ps. Your body, His temple has a role to play in 2022. That'll bring honour and glory to His name. A house of purity, let's walk in purity this year. Let's walk in holiness this year. Let it be a house of prayer. And from the house of prayer, it becomes a house of power. And from a house of power, it will become a house of perfected praise. Let us endeavor, I encourage you, as well as myself, to put these four things into operation in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, the ultimate intention that you had was to infuse mankind with yourself. And Father, we thank you that we are the temple of the living God and the Spirit of God dwells in us. You know, you may be here this morning or watching online and thinking, I'd like this house, my heart to be cleansed. 
I'd like to know the peace of God. I'd like to know that my heart is purified. Well, you can. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess, so if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. In other words, you're saying, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life from this moment on. And you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says you will be saved. We're going to pray a prayer and I want you to follow me in this prayer. Maybe those in the congregation here, if you can follow me and those online, why don't you pray this prayer after me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent Jesus Christ, your only Son, to die on the cross for me. I ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, to cleanse me, to purify my heart from every sin. I invite you into my life to be Lord of my life. And I confess you as Lord. And I believe now in my heart that you were raised from the dead. From now on, this day, I surrender my life to you. I belong to you. And you belong to me. Thank you for hearing my prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we want to help you in your Christian life, in your Christian journey. Christian, Christian life is a journey in getting to know God who saved you. And so if you, were able, if you turn to uh, gc.org.au forward slash first steps, gc.org.au forward slash, slash first steps, I'll show you how we can help you in your Christian journey in the Lord.